Hello everyone and welcome to The Little Quilter. Today we're going to be starting a new quilt. I am going to be using these kite, so block lock rollers, kite in a square ruler. It makes a five inch finished kite block. So you can see here's the kite and then this will be the background fabric. Um, and I'll show you guys an up close video of this. I saw this used several years ago with the Mr. Domestic art gallery fabric. Um, so it's, it's pretty old. I actually don't know if there's, I know the designer is Mr. Domestic. I don't remember what the actual name of the fabric is. If I can find it, I'll list it below, but, and I've got some more of it down here. I'll go through and show you all of the, the swatches as well so that you can see those. I saw this, um, on a blogger called a crafty Fox and I will link her, her website down below or maybe show a picture on here of, what she did with this quilt and these fabrics and it was beautiful and she used the kite she actually set her kites on point and when I saw this several years ago I was like I want to do that quilt that's the quilt I want to do and I'm gonna look at all of the stuff and see if I can get it all I ordered the fabric I don't remember where I ordered the fabric now maybe Etsy I think it was a combination of places because I think it was towards the end of that fabric run but I think this quilt would be beautiful with any sort of fabric out there, with any sort of very bright and happy fabric. I'm going to do the background in just a plain white, a pure white. So I'm gonna show you guys in my bullet journal where I have been working on that because now it's been several years, I've done several quilts. I came back to that pattern and said, okay, I wanna use this fabric. I wanna do the kite roller, I wanna do it, but I don't know if I want to do it on point like she did. And so I've drawn out several designs using my bullet journal just to doodle ideas down and see how I want to do it. So I'm going to show you. Okay, so this is my bullet journal and I'll just use the tabs. I have this little thing flipped here. Um, if you guys don't use a bullet journal or somewhere to keep record of it, I really would recommend it. And a bullet journal could be anything. This could be called a quilt planner as well. So I do have um, like, you know, a, a calendar that I put in here as well. But in between that, what I do is my quilt projects and just a place to keep everything if I have design ideas or anything, I can put those in here as well. So this is usually my layout for that. So the start date, the name of the quilt, which I messed there, up there, um, a to-do list. So whether that's cutting your fabric, designs, um, laying things out, piecing, binding, sewing, all of that goes through here. And this is design, material, progress, completed. Um, so what I wanted to show you guys though was this over here. So this is my quilt idea page. So I knew I was going to be using this to make that quilt block. And so I wanted to take this design idea and see how many ways could I come up to do something with this quilt, with this kite. And so one idea, this is a five inch finished block, okay? And so that also is gonna help me sort of figure out how big I wanted my quilt to be, how much I needed to cut as well, and make sure I have the right amount of fabric. So I'll show you guys all of my ideas and then we'll go over. Um, so this right here is the first one that I had was doing these kites um, coming in on point to each other like this and then putting a blank, so a white square with cornerstones on it. Um, I think this pattern looks pretty cool. And I like this sort of star secondary block that you get. So I went through and erased where all of the lines would be. So this would kind of be the secondary pattern that you would see on this quilt. Um, and then I did just no cornerstones, no blocks. So just those points being on, on point. And I thought, well, that looked pretty cool. Um, and then the second block that I did thought about was because I also thought about doing this quilt in a way that would look like quilts in the sky. And so I had this design down here of doing different, you know, different progressions, almost like you would do with flying geese. You know, some people will put flying geese going in up and down and horizontal. So doing that here, having them go in different directions, you know, the final layout would just be whatever it would be. 
Um, I wasn't really sure about this just because I think it would look cool, but then I thought it might start to just look kind of crazy looking and discombobulate it. But I think it would be a neat idea to come to if you had a bunch of fabric and you just wanted to make a bunch of kite blocks, then laying it out, I think it would be easier to visualize this than on paper. And then I did this last one here and I was doing drawing the blocks with them coming in. And what I realized was this is essentially the same pattern as this. Um, so what I then thought about doing was coordinating the colors. So I know it's a little bit hard. Let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. So I thought about coordinating the colors here so that you could kind of make a design pattern with this. I think this is a little bit much for me right now. Again, I think this would be really cool to design if you had a bunch of blocks already cut and you wanted to lay them out because all of these are just essentially that. You would have to, to know a little bit about what you wanted to do just so that you could coordinate the background colors um, because these blocks have the same, that would be their background color right here and here. So you would have to coordinate a little bit, but I think that would look really cool as just an overarching block, but I just don't think I'm ready for that. And then let me sort of scroll back out again here. This is like what a crafty fox did. So having those on point going all the way down. And then I've got, again, doing this pattern, but just putting sashing in. So using your cornerstones, putting sashing in all the way around them, um, which I think looks good. And the one thing I did like about this pattern is because these two patterns can end up looking very similar, you know, potentially you end up with this block rather than this block. So it just depends on how you're wanting to lay it out. I think one thing you could do with this would be to keep your colors the same here versus keeping your colors the same here, you know, would help to differentiate that. And then the last one I had here was instituting some flying geese along with that kite block. So I think I'm going to end up going with this and doing a color gradient. Um, and so I'm going to get to working on that and we'll jump into actually cutting the fabric and seeing what we've got. Okay, everyone. So the first thing that I did was to press all of my fabric with best press and iron it nice and flat so that I got a good starch so that it will hold its shape really well and hopefully not fray. The next thing I did, I wanted to clean up the edges of my fabric and then taking my ruler, I wanted to measure out seven inches for the background fabric and the block lock ruler tells you. So if you have a different size kite quilt, the finished ones on these are five inches, uh, a five inch square, and the background you cut to a seven inch strip, and then the actual kite fabric, so that center fabric, you're going to cut to a six inch strip. And that's what I'm doing here is just making sure that I did that. On the seven inch strip, my ruler doesn't measure that long. So I did have to use my mat to measure it. For the for the kite fabric, my ruler is long enough that I can just use it to measure it. I did find cutting out the kite a bit of a challenge. I wasn't quite sure how I should lay this out to get the best amount of use of my fabric because unfortunately, unlike a hexagon or a square, it doesn't really have that same ability of just like flipping it over um, because that top part is so much fatter than the bottom part. I decided on laying it sort of flat on the one side and then flipping it over to get to that sort of utilizing that pointed edge. I looked everywhere and even on block lock to see if there were like recommendations for how you should lay this out once you cut your your six inch strip of fabric and i really didn't find any so i do think that if you had some really cool tula pink fabric this would be one of those those quilts where you could do quite a bit of fussy cutting and not really feel bad about not utilizing all of the fabric because i did feel like there was some waste associate it with cutting out this kite you know I did the best I could but when you have a weird shape 
you definitely are going to have, you know, some some fabric that that doesn't get used. Now, the good part about this is that you also are this is an oversized cut. So for both the background and the kite and the block lock roller, the big one at the end is going to help you to cut it down to size. So, you know, I definitely like to try and be careful with cutting my fabric, but at the same time, you know, if it's not exactly on point as you're moving it around, you know, don't don't get too stressed about it. Um, the other thing is having this rotating roller mat, I think is really imperative for blocks like this. You know, you can do it without, you know, and especially if your cutting table is one where you can move around the table and cut without having to move your pieces, then that's fine. But for me, it was really nice to be able to sit this in one spot and just move, rotate my fabric around and make those cuts. So now I just wanted to go through all of the pieces of fabric that I had cut just to see kind of with the differences between each of them because I did not do any fussy cutting. I was just cutting along the grain of that fabric to see where it went. Now I'm going to take the white background fabric and what I found with this one was this was a lot easier, a lot more like using your sort of, I would say, more normal looking type of, of rollers that you cut. There is this one little ledge on the end, which you do, you know, I kind of start back away from the roller and then move into that spot or at least set your, your cutting blade next to it so that you don't cut it off of, cut it off of your roller. But that little lip that you cut on this piece of fabric is what's going to help you line it up on the kite and know that you're setting your fabric on there correctly. So it is an important piece to make sure that you cut. It's also important to note that you should have some really sharp blades when restarting and probably a good idea to change out your blades whenever you start a new quilt. I definitely have changed out my blades since this video because they were getting a little bit dull and I was getting those strings and those little pieces that get caught. Um, I also think one thing I want to get is a uh, one of those sh blade sharpeners. I don't know if anybody has one of those. I've seen them. I don't have one. I just have a bunch of blades that I still haven't gone through and I was kind of going to wait until I went through them to get one just to kind of not have to expend money if I don't have to. But if anybody has one of those blade sharpeners for, for their rotary cutters, um, comment down below on which ones you really like or which one you have that seems to work well, just because I'm definitely looking at getting one of those in the future. The next thing that I'm gonna do here is show you, so I've got all of my kites in the middle and then on the background pieces and that little lip is where we cut to get that corner piece on the kite. You're just gonna line up that, that lip on the corner of the kite fabric, right sides together if you're not using a white fabric then it would be the right sides together of the fabric. Once you've done that, and because I've starched, I can sort of just finger press it open and it'll stay really nicely. You do have to finger press these open for the block lock roller to sort of sit on them really well. I know that that can be um, a little bit frustrating if you're used to ironing your seams open or if you're used to pressing your seams to the dark side. Um, so in this instance, all of my seams need to be pressed towards the light and pressed out so that they are sort of grabbed by that block lock roller. And then I'm just doing some pressing here to make sure that that kite roller is, that kite is really set down nicely. I was going to flip it over and cut on my mat and then I thought, well, I have this rotating mat. I would rather just use that so that I can rotate it around. And you want to be really careful when you're setting this block lock roller on there so that you really get it set in those seams. The other thing which is hard to see on video is you can really see the point of the kite whenever you are cutting this and whenever you're looking at the um, the roller itself, this little roller. It really works really well. I was very pleased and it was pretty nice to go from that block, cutting it down and coming off 
with this really perfect kite square. So the next thing that I'm going to do is show you guys, this is the layout design that I've chosen to do. And obviously I'm going to be doing it in a rainbow array of colors, I believe. And so all I did was sew a quarter inch seam down each side. And then I decided to press these open rather than pressing to one side because that center of the block is going to be fairly bulky with all of those seams coming together. And so pressing them open will help to diminish that as well. I feel like once you start having those seams sort of pressed outward on the white, it just kind of looks consistent if the seams are sort of not noted elsewhere, but I just think it looks a little bit more consistent when you can see the other seams. Once I've got that pressed open, I'm going to take those two pieces, nest the seams together as well as I can since they're open. I decided to put a pin on either side of those seams to hold them together just because, again, that seam is really quite thick. And then I wanted to kind of set that seam before before I started again pressing it open and starting from that center point it really was very very thick and uh, I did sit there for a moment just to really try and set that seam and that is what that block looks like okay everybody so I have completed the kite block and using this block lock kite in a square roller really helped to get these points right on where they needed to be, okay? Um, to make that work, you do have to sew your seams out, or sew your seams, you have to iron your seams outward, which the issue that I have with that is that at the end, whenever I made this, this is very, a very bulky seam so I ironed these parts open to try and help with that but it's still very bulky um, so this is my final block that I am going to do for my quilt that I chose to do out of all of those different patterns that I talked about with you guys and the next time that I see you guys we're gonna go over how I am going to set this quilt up hopefully I will have more of these guys made as well so that we can go over the layout of it as well of how I'm going to do that and I'm going to go over how I came up with the numbers for my quilt and um, yeah I look forward to seeing you guys next time so as always don't forget to like subscribe give me thumbs up comment down below I love responding to you guys's comments and hearing everything that you all are quilting as well it's so inspirational to know that everybody else is out there doing quilts, doing other things with us. So um, we'll see you guys next time on The Little Quilter. Have a great day.